Welcome to the EU Championship and Mobile Gaming League. My name is Imperium, and we have some absolutely fantastic games ahead of you for you guys tonight. But uh, I'm not alone. I have the one and only, the ever awesome, the ever American, Denominate. How are you doing, my <laughs> dear sir? I'm doing all right. Thank you so much for having me, Imperium. And as you mentioned, we do have some pretty crazy games ahead of you guys today. Uh, lots of previous pros in the heads up, uh, or in the uh, head to head we have going on here. Uh, we'll be seeing Tyra's, Techno JJ, Hundor, Keanu Nikoa, a bunch of players that uh, you guys in Europe will be very familiar with. Yeah. Plus, we have uh, we have the team that are essentially going to be going to the WESG Live Finals in China next year. So every single game from now until then is essentially preparation for them, Denominate. So they're not, surely they're not going to be on the back burner in tonight's game. Uh, we would like to see them pushing forward here, but uh, you know, it is Vainglory, you never know. Surprises happen. Uh, we see a lot of very good upcoming talent uh, throughout all regions, really. So 5v5 is really shaken up the way things go. Uh, you know, Europe, for a long time there, I mean, all of 3v3 was very, very passive uh, throughout a majority of their games, and it's it's nice to see them bring a little bit more aggression to the table here now in 5v5. Yeah, exactly. Plus with the, you know, of, co of course it's a little bit um, off-kilter. Plus with the... Um... With the kind of announcement of, of the upcoming Worlds Invitation, I think it, it's starting to, you know, add a little bit of spice and a little bit more competitiveness into Vainglory 5v5 in the pro scene. But however, we are into the draft of this first game, best of three series between Bowser and Sly. First band coming out 
as Yates followed by Reza Denominator. That's pretty kind of standard and nothing that we haven't seen before. Yeah, not at all. Reza is a huge powerhouse on the board, uh, as well as Churnwalker has been one that's frequently picked up here as well. Uh, Yates, we have not seen as much success as we would like to uh, out of the Yates, but it is going to be a Finn uh, picked up for the A side. Yeah, and I think just because Yates is, is requires a certain type of skill set play style, and plus he is kind of countered a little bit right now with the meta heroes like Silver and Ale. Um, and, and even Finn. So he's kind of, he requires a particular comp, but either way, following up Sly, pick up Larlai and Grace. Um, very typical kind of combo, especially Larlai, one of the strongest captains right now in Vainglory 5v5 denominator. I expect nothing but the best coming out from Sly with this uh, Larlai pickup. But unconventionally, and Bowser follow up with the Catherine. It has been a long time denominated since I've actually seen a Catherine being played on the House of Fold, especially in the competitive scene. Yeah, you are absolutely right there. Catherine is one that uh, I know me and Max had talked about last week about, uh, you know, that reliable stun for a Scarf, you yes. know, needing someone who can shut that ultimate down because when you pair, uh, when you pair Scarf's ultimate up with the uh, with the Broken Myth, I mean, you're you're nearly taking true damage at all times while you're in that uh in that ultimate uh and it can really delete teams very very quickly uh and and that's not even to account for the fact that his spitfires just absolutely maul your front line to pieces oh, especially when it comes to late game but talking about mauling the enemy to pieces bowser did unfortunately pick up the vox but let the anchor go through to slice and now sly have a comp of a lar like grace and getting silver nail while over on the side of Bowser looking to pick up their last pick, but they have a Finn, Catherine, Vox, Kinetic, and a CP duel. It's gotta be a CP duel, right? Denominate. Um. Well, I mean, it could it come could come down to a lot of things. I mean, you know, the the crystal jewel, uh, obviously looking kind of for that one and done, almost assassin style alt pick somebody off who's uh. You know out of position or not expecting it where you could guarantee a kill or two um versus the weapon jewel who is a little bit more in your face uh more of a brawler uh it does look like they are chalking it up down the crystal path but we won't know until we're in the game uh i'm interested to see how that ends up working out against the uh the silver nail and the anka and the varia though yeah it's definitely gonna be a little bit risky the one thing that could be a very solid combo coming out from Bowser is you have to force a cord into the merciless pursuit into the big red button that plus with the kinetic a on the overdrive allowing the stun to come out that could lead to some very potential late game combos coming out from Bowser but before then denominate they're gonna have to deal with the strong early game connections rotations and the synergy coming out from this slide team it's gonna be very hard I, I feel like they're gonna have to play quite passive play really safe and let their heroes naturally get up to their late game power spikes yeah you are absolutely right but we are ready to get into the sovereign's rise here we have uh bowser versus sly for you guys sly was a uh, pretty big powerhouse last time we seen them any uh any words on what to look out for this game in period just we've got it we've said it for say it again tyra's and Hundor together, they have been doing a lot of work, but already we are seeing Keanu Nico and Cracks really going to the enemy jungle along with Tyrus to try and put down the early game pressure. It's what they really need to do to nominate. Yeah, absolutely seems to be the case. Anka going to be a huge one this game. Unfortunately, I don't know if I can even click on her at this point. <laughs> maybe, maybe Max can let me know if that's been fixed or not, <laughs> but... Uh... Um, it'll be fun to see the Anka come through and, and, you know, be that heavy assassin. You know, that's really where the Vox and the Kinetic are going to have to look out for, especially through the mid game. Uh, an unsuspected rotation coming out of Tyros here on the Anka could easily spell disaster for, for a first turret or even, a even a second turret as we get into the mid game. Yeah, and also at this stage of the game, I'm actually surprised at how aggressive Bowser are actually looking going into the enemy jungle 
Oh, um, you see this engagement? Yeah, big stun there on Keanu Nakoa. Mike may be able to clean up the kill. Can he get the last hit? No, there's going to be a Halcyon last coming out. Mike now in a rough spot here between Hundor, Tyra's, and Keanu Nakoa. They're all dropping dangerously low, but in the end, it is going to be Mike falling there. Now, Tetno JJ, he's dueling it out with exclusion, but uh, nothing going to come of that one. And uh, two kills picked up the board very quickly there by Sly. Yeah, two kills, 600 gold lead. Bowser, I like the aggression, but come on, your comp is not early game effective. Play it safe, be reactive when it needs to be, but don't initiate a team fight when you know there's an anchor on the rise ready to rotate and take the enemy team out. Only engage in that kind of situation if you really are 100% sure of where that anchor is. They've just let two kills over. They've really put Sly in the forefront of carrying this game forward, and I expect side to even take more advantage of this coming on forward with Tyrus looking to support Hundor up in this top lane. They are really a strong pairing together, and um, this are they also can and go. I feel is actually a little bit kind of understated as a support. I know that might sound stupid to say, but I think he's uh, you know, he's really pulled out some absolutely fantastic plays over the last couple of weeks on. On this support position with the crucibles, with the likes of the the activatables, and it's really paid off for this slide team. And I expect them to, um, you know, be a big hassle for Bowser on this lower line. Yeah, Tyrus comes through a little bit sneaky there, ends up stealing away the gold oak with this Anka, even though there was a cam that had uh, spotted him spotted him out there. So, pretty decent gold lead going over to the side of Sly at this point in time. They're sitting up 2,000 gold in under four minutes. Uh, obviously, no turret takes yet, but uh, that may change here soon. Uh, we do have a weapon blade built on the Grace, looking for some of that early game aggression. Likely going to go very tanky, though. Uh, kind of play that, that dual, like, almost off-tank role. Yeah, we will be interested how that does play out. But once again, we are seeing the aggression coming out from Bowser. Yeah, Hundor is on the back of this fight, getting some big damage onto Mike and Juju. Mike's going to go ahead and use that rocket leap over the wall. Vox, however, he is not going to make it. Three on the board now for the side of Sly. And, uh, you know, they're starting to take a pretty commanding lead over these fights. The rotations have been pretty on point. And uh, Tyra's is getting incredibly fed here on the Anka. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst thing and the last thing you want to do in the game of Vainglory 5 v is feed the tires and feed an Anke going into this game, but they are being ever so aggressive to nominate. Yeah, they absolutely are. Mike is looking for the kill onto Hundor. Can they find it though? Hundor, he's on the run. Flask is out. He's going to make it out alive. Almost in fact picking up a little bit of extra damage there as well, but it looks like we're going to have a couple recalls across the board. Uh, including Silver Nail, Techno JJ there in the mid lane. Uh, looking down into the bot, Kinetic strung a little bit up against the Anka and Grace push. Tyra's going to find himself some more of the enemy jungle there. And uh, yeah, the Anka's getting to a pretty scary point. Yeah, like Tyra's is already on 3.5k gold and Omni. That is realistically, that is over 600 gold ahead of the highest gold member of. Um... Bowser, that is a ridiculous level of feeding, and it's only going to get worse as we do see him hit the power spikes, which will most likely be an aftershock first item. But look at this aggression coming out, the nominee. Yeah, Tyra's deep in this fight. He's looking for a kill onto the Kinetic. Can he find it? I think he should be able to pretty easily here. Rest of the fight is going to disperse, but uh, that should be one kill. Yep, there it is. It's going to go over to Techno JJ on the Silver Nail. Uh, another very strong pick this update, actually. He's already got that Serpent's Mask complete. Uh, likely going to be going into the... I think we've seen the Breaking Point and the Bone Saw mostly come out on Silver Nails. Works pretty well with his kit. He gets that extra bonus attack, um, obviously, so uh, can help stack some of that defense shredding as well as his own power boost up pretty quickly. Yeah, exactly. I've also seen Tornado Triggers being picked up instead of Bone Saw as a third item, but most likely it will be um, a Bone Saw. But over on the side of uh, Bowser, we see Husia has picked up the Serpent's Mask as well. So that kind of, you know, trade for trade for now between the two bottom laners and respective teams. Tyrus now has that Aftershock Power Spike. Alternating Current has been picked up by Hundor on this Varia once again will also be a bit of a solid power spike matching up very well with Tyrus putting pressure under 
on Rudy up in this top lane. But in fairness to Catherine is pretty good at dealing with her with that damage with her be on the storm crown. It really does allow herself to kind of secure that minion wave and secure any kind of hard engagement. Yeah, it does look to be the case. Rudy getting forced out here in the top lane. That's going to allow Hundor and Tyra's to get some free damage on that turret. Uh, interesting to see Rudy sticking around here. Hundor and Tyra's, they're now rotating towards mid. Tier 3 boots picked up for this here. Anka going to have that additional cooldown and energy regeneration. Uh, unfortunately, Tyra's is going to miss as he comes in. He pokes a little bit of damage out, but uh, not too much coming of that fight. <clears throat> oh, my humble apologies. Kind of got something stuck in my throat there, yeah. I, I, I've i also seen that come out from Anka's um, a lot more commonly, getting that Halcyon Chargers as a second item, like you mentioned, with the cooldown. It works pretty well compared to the likes of a Clockwork, plus you have the extra movement speed. But Juju being put under pressure by three-man Sly engagement. Yeah, it, that was pretty painful to watch, especially as the big red button of a Crystal Jewel came out and everybody on Sly was just able to basically shrug it off as they take down that River Troll. Turret is going to be destroyed in the top lane. Hundor really using that range to his advantage, forcing Rudy out of the lane once again. And meanwhile, the rest of Sly, they're looking to get themselves this Crystal Treant. Good fish food is going to stun up Exclusion. But can Tyra secure this one? Wait for it! Burned! Trying to get that... Uh, Trying to get that buff, and it's not quite going to work out for him. Yeah, it's going to put now the rest of Bowser under a lot of pressure. They look to chase this mid lane with the rotations coming out. The ghost wing is up. However, Crax is under a little bit of pressure, so he's going to have to be careful. But Sly R head in gold by over 5k. It is the early game power spike we did expect coming out from this comp. It hasn't really helped that Bowser being a little bit more aggressive than I would like to see. Look at Juju just going in. Tyra just Mark. annihilates Juju. He's now in the other side of the fight trying to get down Rudy. That's going to go over to Hundor. Now, man, the rest of Bowser, they've got to be on the run. Tyra's huge oh, damage oh, coming through oh. from the Anka. And uh, unfortunately, that's just what happens when you let an Anka get fed to this point. Uh, you know, again, the, the Halcyon Chargers and the Aftershock helping keep that energy regeneration up. Big red button, not quite going to get the steal. That one's going to be finished off by Sly, sitting up 8 to 1, sitting up 7,000 gold, and sitting up one turret over the opposition. <laughs> and Tyrus hasn't even got a second tier 3 offensive item, and he's doing that damage already. I expect Aegis is to be coming out all mildly all over the place from Bowser, but it could be too little too late unless they really work together to hit that late game power spike. I do think definitely Bowser are far from out of it. It's definitely not um, the most one-sided game I've seen, but with Sly being so consistently aggressive, it feels like that Bowser, unless they kind of, you know, change up their place a little bit, they will not have an answer for Sly even at that late game because he's really you've got frostburn first item coming out from nick i don't really agree with it but i get why it is it's used to be a utilization force cord is blocked yeah force cord is gonna get blocked tyra's kind of dancing around the edge of the fight not a ton going on right now nobody wanting to commit too hard uh really all that bowser have lined up for them at this point is Oh man, if they can land a good force to cord, here comes the quibble. Not quite gonna get the targets he wanted. That's gonna be Juju falling very early on. Tyrus receives that divine intervention. He's gonna make it out alive too. His Hundor cleans up a second kill for the team, putting 10 on the board. And now I think Sly are just gonna go ahead and take this uh, this mid lane turret here. Absolutely no opposition. The Crystal Jewel has not gotten to a point where that ultimate is even scary to the side of Sly. And that is not looking good for the side of Bowser at this point. The nominee, in a matter of two minutes, that Goldie has gone up from 5k to over 9k. That is a ridiculous push, a ridiculous um, raise in Goldie. You're going to see the itemization really already. It's already paying off, but it's going to become even further and further as another engagement comes out from Yeah, Crax has dropped dangerously low, but he almost makes it out alive. Hundor actually felt a little bit of a tingle from that there, big red button. Here comes the rocket leap. Hundor, he's on the run. Can his team save him? And a turnaround kill for Hundor on the Varia as they've got 11 to 2 on the board. They've got the health bars that they feel comfortable in this fight. Tyra's is looking for a way to uh, 
maybe get a pick onto the kinetic or onto the box, but. With uh, the side of Bowser hanging back, it's just going to be Sly dispersing, taking away more jungle, getting Tyra's even more fed. He does have the um, he does have the Spellfires uh, built now, as well as Hundor on the Varia. He's got the alternating current as well as the Dragon's Eye. Yeah, of course, that's it. You're seeing these two item power spikes across the board coming out from Sly, whereas when you look over at Bowser, exclusion on this fox has yet to hit a second offensive item. Husik has yet to hit a second offensive item. And also Mige has also yet to hit a second offensive item. Bowser, play it safe. Don't get caught out. Don't risk yourselves. And also, I want to point out, I really like the fact, as you point out, Cracks has gone for really that defensive build with that um, Crucible first item coming out for Sly. Oh, Tyra's over the wall. Juju's going to drop Tyra's. He's now on to Kinetic. Can he find a second kill? There's the double kill going over to Tyra's. That's going to very easily be a Ghost Swing take here for the side of Sly as they are commanding these fights over and over again. Cracks always on the brink of death, but just about every time been able to make it out alive. And uh, excellent use of the Divine Intervention onto Tyra's multiple times throughout this game. Reduces the damage that he takes as well as gives him that big powerful heal behind it. So uh, that's really set Tyra's up to have just such a free game here on the Anka. 5-0-5 oh, is the scoreline for, uh, for Tyra's. Plus when you have no spell fires being built on any member of Bowser, the Vox has gone for Dragon's Eye second on. I, I don't disagree with it, but... Mickey on the duel should realistically have gone for Bahusek is about to get caught out. No? Oh, yeah. And that's going to be another kill going over to Tyra's there in the bottom lane. He's got a minion wave. He might even look to take this turret. Uh, I think he should have the power to with the Aftershock. But uh, that's not the only thing that the side of Bowser have to worry about, obviously. With the Black Claw marching down the mid lane, Hondor and Kiana Nakoa there to support it. Tyra's working his way over, might be able to find a burst onto Exclusions here. Finds a little bit, maybe not quite as much as he was hoping for. Uh, they're not able to pick up a kill onto Rudy or Exclusion. Uh, Mika taking quite a bit of damage. Tyra's back into this fight, taking quite a bit of damage himself. Meanwhile, we've got the split push coming from Techno JJ and Cracks here in the top lane as well. This mid armory is definitely going down, but can Sly close the game out on they this can. one? They can. I think they're going to close it. They're going to push hard. They've got really full health on this board. They're going to take down second armory denominator. This is going to be a 15 minute game being secured by Sly. I can pretty much guarantee it. Yeah, it looks to be the case. Tyrus comes through huge, almost blows exclusion off the map. He's instead able to find a kill onto Rudy. And in fact, that one's going to go over to, uh, to Techno JJ, but it's going to be a kill onto the Kinetic now. I think they're just toying with the food, padding some of their stats a little bit. There's going to be the Bane Pistol dropping as uh, Tyra's puts the hurt on that one. 16 to 2 in favor of Sly. 13,000 gold lead. What a game coming out of Sly here, Imperium. Yeah, I remember when I said it wasn't that much one sided. Well, that changed pretty quickly, the nominee. <laughs> um, look, it's not that Sly played a particularly amazing game. It's not like they played a game that it was world invitational worthy but they got a hand it to them on a play because bowser they picked a late game comp a strong late game comp by all means i don't you know dislike the comp that they had but if you're gonna pick a late game comp it's so obvious play passive play safe look to kind of naturally like i said hit those power spikes a two three item damage power spikes definitely need a spell fire on one <laughs> member of your team when you have a grace on the enemy team look to play it up to your strengths then you can look to um to annihilate the enemy team with late game but bowser they didn't let themselves get the late game and that's what made it so damn easy for slide the nominate yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you might know better. Do we have Max for a uh, between games or no? No, no. It, it, it's just it's just me and you, baby. Just me oh, and you today, beautiful. I got you. So we're gonna get ready to get into game two here between Sly and Bowser. Game one, while uh, 
Well, maybe not the most exciting of matchups as it was very quick uh, in a win over to the side of Sly. Maybe for game two, we can get a little bit uh, a little bit more comfortable of a draft for the side of Bowser. Maybe they can play a little bit more for the late game. Um, but man, it's going to be difficult. Sly was very, very aggressive there early on, uh, pushed every advantage they got, capitalized on every kill. And Priam, what do the side of Bowser need to plan on here uh, as we get into game two? Well, like, you know, obviously, they've got nothing to lose. They're going up against Sly, the reigning WSG um, qualifier champions. Realistically, most likely the top team in Europe right now. They're heading over to the Invitationals, the World Invitationals, next week as well. So, Bowser, they have nothing to lose. So, their, their play style in the last game, I, I really, I admired it, to be honest, that early game aggression. But pick a comp that suits it. You know, if you're gonna play that, if you're gonna play an all all or nothing type play style, pick a comp that suits you. Go for the aggressive early games. Go for the Idris and Reza combo if you can pick it up. Go for the Inara Reza combo. Go for that Meline early game aggression in that mid lane that will look to, you know, make Sly sweat that little bit more. Because also looking over on the, on the side of Sly, I'm sure they would like nothing more than. With all due respect, a challenge to Nomina. I'm not saying Bowser aren't aren't giving them a challenge, but they could easily give them more of a challenge. Make Sly work hard for that win or shut them down and cause a bit of an upset. That is exactly what we want. It's what both teams want, and it's what I'm sure it's what the viewers want to Nomina. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, just a little bit of a heads up for you guys here. We are waiting on a uh, player to get back into the game now so we can get you guys ready for game two. Um, you know, I'm definitely interested to see how Bowser play uh, out the draft here coming around game two. They let the Anka go through. I think that was a, yeah. uh, a pretty huge mistake. Uh, Tyra's pretty much walked away uh, with that game uh, all through the mid game was just able to find pick after pick after pick and uh, it really made the life of Sly easy it made it so that Hondor was able to come online at pretty early cracks oh, was yeah. able to get tanky built uh, very early on and was really able to be that front line but we've uh, got everybody in now so um, you know do we do we expect the Anka to get banned here I guess is what we're going for Imperium it would definitely make sense, especially because Sly are going to be first pick. So Sly aren't going to look to ban it, in my opinion, but definitely over inside of Bowser, they will look to ban that as quickly as possible are the second draft. And also, I want to just quickly draw on the build path that came out of the Catherine the last game. We mentioned that, and, and you talked about the Grace picking up Crucible first item. That's exactly what um, Rudy should have gone on that Catherine. Should have gone full tank cap to provide that frontline defense along with the fiend it would have made them a lot more effective it would have made them a lot more useful in the team fights plus with the aggression that was coming out from um bowser it would have definitely made more sense but sly have gone for that first ban anger making things just that little bit spicier and then over on the side of bowser we do see a yates ban coming out from them i expect something like maybe a Lorelei or churn walker ban coming out from sly as their second ban i'd say mm, no they're hovering over that reza taking away an anka and a reza not going to uh make it too easy for bowser to pick up an early game aggressive aggressive comp which i think is the wise thing for actually sly to do considering the place that bowser had in that first game to nominate yeah, Bowser was definitely looking to get to the late game and Sly just didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, so I think Sly really just want to take away any opposition that they can have for the mid game uh, and then just push their dominance through for the win. Uh, the Yates and the Varia do get banned away on the side of Bowser. And uh, looks like the side of Sly might be thinking about this Lance first pick, which is a interesting first pick up for sure. Um, what I do think Tyrus might do is it might um sorry, not just Tyrus, but the whole of the Sly team. I think okay, they've gone for the, the, the comfortable, you know, reliable um Arden, the one punch beast, the one punch monster that is Arden in the current three point eight patch. I reckon Sly they could easily go for a very experimental comp 
um, in this situation. Maybe comp they could, that they could be using in preparation for the World Invitational against these other cross regional teams from the likes of NA and EA. So it, it would make sense if they did prepare for that in some way, shape, or form by picking up an interesting um, composition. But either way, looking into this game, we have seen Bowser going for a fin. Lara, I do like that. Those two, those two here has been picked up by Bowser, but now Churn Walker has been picked up from Sly. The draft is looking nice and healthy from both sides. I'm definitely interesting to see what Techno JJ follows up with. It would be a good idea to go for a Vox. I feel you mix Churn Walker, Vox mid lane is going to counter Finn. They've done that. Boom, Sly, you know exactly what you guys are doing. Yeah, it looks to be the case. As we see constantly the prioritization on the captains as we have uh, obviously the Yates band, we have the Arden, Finn, Lorelei, and Churn all picked up in those first couple slots. Uh, the Vox is a huge uh, huge pick for Hundor if we see him end up being the one to play it. Um, but we do have a Scarf pick up here um, on the side of Bowser, and that's one that we uh, have specifically seen have a very high win rate uh, throughout this tournament. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see if Bowser are able to pull it off. Again, gotta make it to the late game. And yeah. Sly last game really just dominated the early and mid game so hard that it was it was difficult for the side of Bowser to get to that late game. It was difficult for them to get their items online. And that's kind of what I'm worried about for the Scarf here. 100% but I want to talk about this Baptiste pickup because he's a hero who I've seen come into the meta a little bit more in this 3.8 patch nominally actually particularly in the CP build path really has started to kind of come into it because you see you have a lot of AoE damage you have a lot of kind of group team wide lockdown and single target lockdown now i do think in this situation it's going to be a weapon power batiste but i don't think it's a worse pickup coming out from bowser but then over on the side of side a finisher composition with uh oh my god i forget um the name of that hero <laughs> no not kinetic it's um over on the side of sly it's a grace mm -hmm. and uh Kensei. Kensei, there you go um because Kensai is a hero who isn't really played that much in in the, in the meta, but definitely is also very much a late game hero. So interesting coming out from coming out from both teams. If Bowser can play it safe, take it easy, rotate as normally. If they have to lose an early game jungle rotation, don't doesn't matter. Let it go, and then play towards that game. If they can do that, I actually think they really have a strong chance. But Sly are who they are. They're not going to make it easy at all for Bowser to nominate. Oh, no, not at all. And we actually do have a, a couple decent stuns that are available for the Scarf as well. So I do like that about Sly's draft. We have the uh, the uh, Trespass, obviously, the Holy Nova, potentially a Gauntlet. So I uh, like that we have a couple different options to deal with that Scarf. But we are into game one here. Tyra's the, uh, the animal from Anka in game one is going to be on this Churnwalker. And how are we expecting to see this uh, jungle Churnwalker build go here, Imperium? Um, based on previous metas, it was something along the lines of Stormcrown, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know how meta that item will be in the 3.8 patch. It, it's it, Churnwalker we saw come into the fold in the last couple of patches but it's definitely not something that's played often so i'm interested to see what kind of build path is gonna come out for tyrus but tyrus is an expert jungler and we are seeing sly be aggressive because frankly speaking they have the composition to do so and bowser like i said let the early game jungle go farm up in your minions look to protect the likes of that scarf and the kinetic and see how it goes from there play it safe and just to um you know, rotate, and if anything, you should, uh -oh. you should actually... What? Exclusion oh, knows. Exclusion knows. He, he He's done. But <laughs> that's going to be a uh, missed Crystal Tree and Steel there, and a uh, first kill on the board, which is going to actually go into the pockets of uh, Techno JJ, getting himself a little bit of gold there early on, as we see he's working on that Crystal Tree now, as well as the, uh, the jungle minions there with Tyros. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, Bowser should rename their team to Feeder or Nathan. But uh, Hundor seems to be a little bit AFK for now. Definitely interested to see how 
that will affect this fly uh, strategy as you do see that um, hasn't stopped Tyrus and Kratz from being aggressive up in that top lane to nominate. Well, but it appears Hundor is back at this point as we do have a kill. Uh, Batiste is going to drop exclusion now. Oh boy. Oh, Kinetic playing a dangerous game here with the Churnwalker and the Arden. Uh, that weapon buff Arden is definitely a huge threat. Kevin the Koa working his way up on Grace. I think Exclusion just doesn't really have much he can do here except for run. Run, Forest run, my dear friend. Um, Exclusion le even let that kind of wave go, however, Ozik is now coming, at, coming back to provide that little bit of support. But it's really going to put under Exclusion under a lot of pressure with regards to the farming. And that's exactly what sly need to do because Sly already have a 1.2k gold lead or so and this is only in the first three minutes under and we are seeing Tyros and hondor and a 2v3 down here hondor are getting huge damage but taking quite a bit in return he's gonna have to get out that's gonna be a kill on the board for lorelei rudy able to clean that one up now techno jj he's on his way down can he save Tyros? the crystal box comes through strong and picks up three kills here in a second and there Boom. it is. There's the double kill going over to Techno JJ. Tyros was able to clean one up in that fight. But a 5 1 swing there on the side of Sly. Make that six <laughs> as up in the top lane. Grace is able to find a connection onto Kinetic. And now they're looking for more jungle as well. And not a lot that Batiste can actually do to prevent it. As Kiam Nakoa and Cracks, they're a pretty tanky duo here. And uh, it's going to be pretty easy for them throughout the course of this game to get in and steal away the enemy's camps. Yeah, this is just Sly being handed this game on a silver platter. Once again, it's like deja vu, Denominate. Bells are playing a late game comp, but being aggressive in the early game, it just doesn't work. It's like trying to fit a circle shape into a square hole. It's just not going to work, Denominate. They've got to really play it safe, change up their play style in this game. If you can cause a little bit of pressure, a little bit of hassle in the lane, then do that, but back off, because realize the Sly are going to react as quickly as you can say, Vainglory, and that's exactly what they're gonna do in this situation. Yeah, it seems to be the case as Sly, they've already taken themselves a 3,000 gold lead here very early on in the game. We're only four and a half minutes in. So uh, don't even uh, don't even have the jungle shops available yet. Uh, however, they are right around the corner. Techno JJ, he's hit level six. He's got the wait for it online. He's now picked up that alternating current, and this is really where Vox starts to spike. He's able to clear out his waves a lot quicker, uh, as well as with Finn being on the front line, it's going to be very easy for Vox to dish out a massive amount of damage in a short amount of time. But we've got a tussle breaking out up here. Kiana Nakoa, he's going to make it out alive. Tyra's doesn't quite have the mobility this time around, but here comes Techno JJ. The wait for it comes through those resonance bounces. It's gonna be Arden picking up a kill for himself. And it looks like it's only gonna be one, but the health bars of Bowser are very low. And it's gonna be difficult for them to uh, contest any of their turrets if the side of Sly decide they want that objective push. Weapon Triant is gonna get cleaned up by Sly. Kinetic tries, but falls a little bit short there. Yeah, and also Tyrus has got the war threads first item which i definitely think is not the worst idea in the world um it gives him a lot of health because the war threads does make that work but tenno jj getting the kill onto the fin and mika can do nothing with that dragon's breath absolutely nothing once again slight take even more of a goal here. yeah they do but i think tyros might actually drop here he's taking quite a massive amount of damage he's gonna dance it around a little bit but in the end, he will fall. Techno JJ, he'll make it out alive. Uh, Tyra's not a ton of gold to spend. He's going to have a little bit for a couple items. Go swing it now on the map. And we've got some vision down by the side of uh, Bowser there. But I don't know if they're at a comfortable enough point in this game where they could start up a go swing unless if they're able to get a pick or two off first. No, I think they do need to wait until the likes of the Star Blade is picked up by Cracks. Also, we haven't talked about this. Kensei, Kensei's a late game hero, and Sly are winning this early game. Let's just wait until Hundor gets two items. He's going to be disgustingly unstoppable. You follow it up with the way forward. Man, Sly are going to be hitting all kinds of power spikes in the next four to five minutes if they continue this onslaught onto the Bowser team. 
as they are looking to do the way forward. Put pressure onto this mid lane turn. They could even secure it in the next 15 And say on to Rudy in the bot lane, able to use uh, use his abilities to dodge out on the fish food. As you mentioned in the mid lane, it looks like Sly, they're just gonna go ahead and uh, push up into this turret. They're gonna get that first turret taken down, giving their team a little bit of a gold lead. Um, and now they can start to rotate down, use those jungle shops if necessary. You see Cracks and Keanu up here in the enemy jungle, but it is currently cleaned out. Uh, Mike is trying his best to hold on to this mid turret. Juju on his way out now too. And, and this is one of the unfortunate parts for the side of Bowser, right? Is this Scarf, while yes, he wants to spend a lot of time in lane, he wants to get uh, all fed up. Uh, it's a lot of Bowser spending their time in lane. We've got a kill onto Kensei in the bot lane. Here comes the Dragon's Breath. It is gonna get stunned up by the Gauntlet. Have the side of Sly extended themselves too far. Keanu Nakoa, he's on the run. Tetno JJ, he's coming over into this fight. This Crystal Vox spams out massive amounts of damage, but can he clean up the kills? Exclusion, he's down to just one or two hits. And that looks like all the aggression is going to come to a stop there by the side of Bowser. Scarf does not have the energy to pursue the fight, and Tetno JJ alone was just too big of a threat for them to deal with. Yeah, so, you know, you got me gay on this Scarf. Picking up Frostburn first item. Considering there's okay, yeah, you got Grace and Arden and kind of Charm Walker as frontliners, but realistically, that scarf needs to go full damage. It needs to go, uh, you know, Spellfire first item. But talking about that exclusion being put under pressure by Cracks, but Crack is having to push back because Husek and Exclusion are holding their ground quite nicely. The gold is actually surprisingly still only at about. 3k in the favor of Sly. We've seen um, kind of surprisingly Bowser have been a little bit aggressive, but they've held off a little bit. They are still behind an itemization considering the fact that the Vox Techno JJ is on two items already. And like I pointed out, Mike is only on first burn. That is about half an item ahead in this first nine minutes of this game. And it is just being echoed all over the comp coming out from Sly as they look to put pressure on, on Rudy in this bottom lane. But they, there is a consistent level of reaction coming out from Bowser as they look to uh, maybe rotate rotate down and support Rudy. But then again, I don't think Bowser know necessarily what to do with their rotations at times um, because they're starting now to get caught out to nominate. Yeah, it does appear to be like uh, Bowser are, even though the gold is a little bit more even this time around, it does still feel like they're playing a bit on the back foot. Scarf has been, uh, you know, doing a good job farming up the lane to the best of his knowledge, but if we, uh, or best of his capability. But if you look, he's quite a drastic amount below Techno JJ, who's actually taking a lot of damage on the front of that fight, but Grace comes through with the Divine Intervention, gonna be able to heal him up. Now it's going to be another push here onto the mid turret. Can Techno JJ find anything out of it? The Ooh. Force Accord is going to come through. He is going to get dropped. That kill is going to go over to Juju. Mike now winding up that ultimate. He's going to find himself a kill onto Tyra's. And just like that, we may have an opportunity for the side of Bowser to get themselves back in this uh, game. Oh no. Oh no. Hundor. Hundor's going in hard. Oh. Hondor comes through with a clean kill on the Mike there. But uh, we do have the rest of Bowser starting up this Ghost Wing. Uh, Finn is tanking it and is quite low. Hondor, no ultimate on the board, but he's in. He's found a kill. Can he duel out the rest? Fish food is going to come through. And he does have to watch out. That Batiste can put out quite a bit of damage. But Tyrus will stop that Ghost Wing take. And that is a win for the side of Sly. Yeah, that kind of made sense coming out from Hondor. Great work coming out from him. Bowser, I liked what they did in that last engagement. They did really make their CC kind of chain with the likes of the Force Accord into the Spitfire, into the Dragon's Breath, then finally. It really did work. Great job coming out from them. And it shows their potential. They've just got to get to that point where they're going to be equal on items. And they could quite easily win these team fights, but Rudy and Hosek are kind of potentially getting caught up. But no, Sly taking it easy, kind of sticking together as a four, four to five man team up around this Ghost Wing area. They could look to secure or basically force a team fight situation from Bowser, but Bowser are split up the nominee, so definitely wouldn't be the wise idea. They should just let the Ghost Wing go if they have any idea and is 
After my sight! So I go in. Yeah, Hunter finding a little bit of damage onto Batiste there, a little bit onto Rudy. Tyra is setting himself up on the back line there, stopping the recalls. And that is going to waste quite a bit of time on the side of uh, Bowser. Uh, however, Kinetic was able to pick up that top turret. Uh, and not a whole lot of push coming out of the side of Sly off the back of that. Uh, they will get the bottom turret uh, with Tyra's and Hundor there together. They may even look for a second, but it looks like we might have a collapse coming on. Crax is up here. He does have the gauntlet. It is dropped, but uh, Techno JJ is struggling to get into this fight. Here it comes. The wait for it is out. Can he find the kill? Exclusion turning a lot of damage around onto Crax. Forced to cord. A little bit wasted there, but Techno JJ, he is going to be looking for more damage. He's got a ton coming out onto Juju. Those resonance bounces will pick up a kill onto Kinetic. And Techno JJ has put a fifth kill on the board for himself. And they're chunking away at this top turret. They've got another wave coming in. Scarf is able to pick up a kill onto Tyra's and Hundor. But the damage is done here in the top lane. Turret is taken. Juju is going to get dropped down as well. 12 to 8. Lead still in favor of Sky, but... I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. Bowser are not out of this. Scarf is starting to get himself into a decent part, portion of his build. Uh, he's got a Frostburn, which is helpful against the Kensei. Um, normally, I would say pass, but I, I like it here on the Scarf build. I, I still disagree with it, personally, because you have enough of that kind of CC with the Finn hitting that level um, 8, hitting that kind of stun capability on his kid. You have... The um, Batiste with that ordained with the fearsome shade that's going to lock down. Plus the fish food coming out from Lorelei. Frostburn was not needed <laughs> at all. Denominate, I do not agree with it. But Bowser, they're not playing too bad. However, Sly, they seem to be taking it a little bit too easy for now. And Keanu Nicole may be having a couple of connection issues. No, he's waiting in the bush. This could be the engagement that Sawyer may be looking for. Let's see what happens to Nominate. And yeah, Juju picks up a couple stuns there. Tyra's taking quite a bit of damage. Huge force to Cord. Can they get the stun? There it is on a Techno JJ. This is the chance that Bowser needed. Can they find the kills though? They're going to pick one up on the cracks. Tyra's, he's out of that fight. Rudy is dueling it out with Techno JJ. Techno JJ winning out on that trade. Here comes the resonance, the pulse. Uh, <laughs> two kills going over to the side of Sly. One is going to be picked up by Techno JJ. The other going to be picked up by Hundor. And uh, I, this Kensei is a little bit of a different pick for Hundor for me. I, you know, I'm used to seeing him on the Bear and used to seeing him on the Vox. I'm excited to see him doing so well on a, uh, a hero that I would say is a pretty high skill cap. Yeah, he, he definitely. That doesn't that more. doesn't reflect his previous. <laughs> just to clarify, just to clarify, Hundor. Great on high skill cap heroes. Mm, mm, yeah, we, we see what you're trying to say. You're basically saying Hundor is boosted. Just just admit it, Denomina. <laughs> but <That's> no. <laughs> that, it, it, it's true, like, can say you, you need to, like, you need, you need to hit that late game power spike, but you also have to be very clever with the, those engagements, especially against the likes of the Finn. And Hundor is now going into on a, on the exclusion, but does back off. But also, he's complimented, complimented very much by Techno DJ on this box. The reason why the nominees, you do see the dragon and the black claw bearing down, is because with the Eve of Harvest, Techno is actually allowed to be a little bit more aggressive because you're going to get more sustain. Whoa! <laughs> Huge! First of damage coming through, Exclusion wiped off the map. Techno JJ picking that one up. Fish food will land for the stun. This choke point turret is going down in Sly. They are on full on aggression here. Forced Accord is gonna pull Hondor off of Mike and Scarf will make it out alive. But uh, even with that fearsome shade coming through, Rudy and uh, Husiek barely making it off the chopping block. I think this is game two going over to Sly at this point. Maybe a little bit of a connection issue here for Tyra's, but it's late enough that it doesn't matter. That's another double kill picked up by the side of Sly, and they are very easily cleaning up this vein crystal. Sly have done it. They've taken it 2-0 Imperium. What a huge performance coming out of these guys today. Yeah, you know, in this second game, Bowser played for sure a little bit better. And again, their comp was not bad. I really liked the comp that came out from Bowser. You had these 
the heroes that really can synergize well together. Finn works well with Scarf. Finn even, you know, get, um, sorry, Batiste works well with Scarf. Lorelai works really well with Kinetic. They are all very synergized heroes together. And as a five-man comp, definitely huge potential. But Bowser were just a little bit too aggressive early game. I do feel that Sly were taking a little bit, taking it a little bit easier this second game for sure i feel like it felt like they were kind of letting you know letting go of themselves a little bit playing a little bit more casual testing the compositions with the likes of the kensei with the likes of the jungle turn walker coming out from tyras like i said maybe testing different kind of comps and strategies leading up to the world invitational in in a week weeks or so time denominate so slide they did what they had to do enough to take this second game and to take this series 2-0 and they will advance forward in the eu champions cup yeah absolutely uh as we get ready for game two i do think we have <laughs> a uh Oh, apparently we are doing things here. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, I didn't know. We're, that much. we're doing things here at, uh, <laughs> at uh, the Vainglory stuffs. But um, overall, uh, you know, huge game coming out of Sly. Congratulations to them. As you mentioned, you know, these guys uh, have a lot looking forward ahead of them. Um, I mean, do we have anything else that you want to you want to say, Imperium, or you know, do we want to get people ready for the second matchup? Well, we're going to get people waiting for the second matchup. But before that, because Sly uh, quite comfortably took the series to the zero, there is roughly about a 55 minute wait until the next set, until the next matchup. So, what has been suggested once again, like we saw in uh, previous weeks, we are going to have. A little bit of a viewer game so if you do want to play a quick kind of casual whether it's 3v3 or 5v5 depending on the numbers that we do get on board jump <coughs> online add vainglory league go hey i want to play we'll get you added to the party get the kind of teams match up as evenly as possible and it will be casted by the one and only myself and the nominee so this is, a, you know, I feel it's a good way of passing the time rather than having a 55 minute break time where people are just going to go, nah, this is a, I'd rather watch paint dry. If they have a little bit of vainglory action to really kind of get their eyes salivating until their eyes, their mouths salivating until the next matchup and has a little bit of fun along the way. Uh, why the hell not to nominate? Yeah, absolutely. That might be uh, fun to uh, watch there. I think Max will be uh, setting that up here shortly. Yeah, he will. Um, you know, we could also have, uh, you know, me and, me and yourself play, but I doubt that that's something people want to see. We could cast and play at the same time. You never know. We could we could talk about how bad our own plays are. But um, All right. well, we... the color casting will be very directed around wherever my camera is at the point. So. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, what's what? What else is going on around map? I don't know. I just know what I'm building. Denominate. You know? know, I'm hitting people with my axe. We're just we're doing the <laughs> vainglory things. But actually, while we are waiting to get um these players involved, were you um able to check out much about the 3.9 patch and what is coming to vainglory in the future? Yo, let me tell you the thing I'm most excited for is definitely yeah. the instant resume. I'm, I I yes. hit notifications all the time. It might be my fault for having people on bypass do not disturb, but but I, I think that's a, a super useful feature that, you know, the game's been out for four or five years now, and that's, you know, yeah. something that we've had to deal with uh, forever. So I, I think that's one of the best changes for me. Uh, I'll let you get into a little bit more of the the color details on some of the changes. I've seen we have a, a new item coming out, Imperium. 
Yeah, there's this new item which has definitely divided the Vainglory community even more than it already is. As it seems, this new item, I'm not gonna lie, I forget the name of it, but I know Celestial Shroud, as I've just been informed, thank you very much, Mr. Producer, beautiful French baguette man, Max Man. <laughs> um, Celestial Shroud. Um, is a new item that's come to Vainglory. So, uh, from what I know, and from again talking to Maxman and kind of having a look on the dev stream, what it does is it's an automatic. It's it's not an activatable, but it does get activated upon, I believe, a basic attack. But what it does is it basically negates any CC for a certain amount of time. Be your hero being affected by any. CC for a certain amount of time denominate so anything like force accord gauntlet um ordain anything holy nova doesn't matter what is thrown at you you are basically negated from those activatables for a certain amount of time and then it goes under cooldown and it becomes available once again you don't get to activate it yourself so it is activated upon um basic attack from what i know a lot of people have turned around and said it's gonna make it very easy for people to play the game um i don't disagree with that but i definitely think it's only gonna make it a little bit easier in the earlier skill tiers but what i will think it will bring to the game is it's gonna bring a higher level of strategy in the higher skill tiers denominate because like we tend to see um in the current kind of meta is a team will focus on the one hero all in one go as a five-man team nothing wrong with that but if you know that the enemy hero in that that you want to focus on has that new celestial shroud item and you go to to clamber onto him as a five-man team with your activatables with your cc and it's negated it basically makes that engagement null avoid or it can be turned against you. So what I think it's going to do, the nominee, is I think it's actually going to bring a higher level of strategy, um, a higher level of kind of when to actually engage on the enemy team, a higher level of, of awareness on on when the cooldown is on that enemy team in the higher skill tier. So it's not that it's going to make it super easy in the lower skill tiers. It's just going to make it a little bit harder in the higher skill tiers and 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 it's going to mean in my opinion that it's actually going to be harder for these players that are hovering above a certain you know vainglory bronze to actually hit the higher skill cap and i definitely don't think it's a worst um idea or slash item to bought the vainglory and uh i'm interested to see how it does play out the number yeah, definitely should be a fun one. Looks like we've got a uh, couple people in here. We might be getting this game here uh, started up. But yeah, thank you know, uh, definitely thank you for going over the uh, Celestial Stroud. I hadn't fully read into that too much. That was a wonderful, wonderful explanation there, Imperium. To be honest, but, uh, I'm yeah, that, 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 everything, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's definitely something that's gonna change up uh, change up a lot of the game. I mean, that's something. That's like one extra thing you now have to address uh, before you before you make that dive. You know that's uh, that's that's huge for Vainglory. So interested to see where that goes. Um, it looks like we are in this private uh, matchmaking here, so we might have a draft for you guys soon. Yeah, we do have well-known players in the EU scene, such as Decca on your screen, Boff, I'm Juju, who did of course play in the last series. Nighthawk, who is part of Fiery Tail roster, Hunter X, um, who is, I forget what team he is currently involved in, if any, and then you have the likes of Anime One Piece, also known as Bruce, and of course, Mickey, who again, played in the last year, so actually all these players are, are definitely good, uh, one player I definitely think we should, well actually two players we should look out for, in particular is Deck on your screen over the A side, and Boff on the right side, those two players are very very competent individually especially deck on your screen is really well um you know you know put up in terms of knowledge and information on the game and has a really strong analytical mindset into game but also has a really great attitude it's just having fun at the game 
Buff also knows his stuff. A little bit quiet, and and not that he keeps it to himself, but you know, he's just a, a he's a quiet one that you don't necessarily think will pull out the play, but then he will come on board and be like, boom, I'm here in this game. But we are into his draft. And straight away, Anka Ban coming out to nominate. Straightforward, makes sense, followed by Charmwalker. Then Yates, most likely, will be, I'd say, a Finn Ban, followed by a Larlai. First hero pickup coming out from um, this A side is what I predict. So, uh, we do see the nominate is on mute. I think he's going for a little bit of a break to have a coffee, maybe have a pee, or a coffee pee, whatever he's into. He's not here to respond, so I can say whatever I want. Kappa. But uh, we do see that Larlai has actually was the hero that was banned over on the B side. With Finn being the first pick up for this A side. Then let's see what this B side follow up with. Art would definitely be a good choice. Followed by something like Silvernail or Vox. The reason why Vox is because obviously Vox is a counter to Finn. And also it takes away that Finn that can work very well with this um finn so definitely a denominator you are back with us i do believe i am back with you i did have to grab a cup of coffee it's not early but just gotta make sure we're awake for these exciting games that we have coming up for you guys uh, a lot of prioritization again on the captains we see the lorelei churn ban uh the yates ban uh we got a glaive pickup though i'm pretty i'm pretty happy i'm pretty set here reza has made it through uh no anka anka did get banned away um we did just see a huge performance coming out of Techno JJ on the uh, the Crystal Vox, so we may be seeing a uh, a repeat of that in this little bit of a viewer skirmish for you guys. Uh, Lyra, a huge captain pickup though, that I think sometimes goes a little bit overlooked. Her her natural ability to help the mid lane just survive and get fed uh, is it's entirely game changing, and we're gonna have a Catherine come through as well. Yeah, and, and, you know, talk about Lyra in particular, as you do see Ringo, lesser known within the within the current meta. But Lyra, I think she's, as a hero, she's actually in the best place um, that she's been in in the, in, in the last good feet. Even since 5v5 was released in terms of balance, she's strong in the right way, but she can also be kind of shut down. Uh, but she can work well in the right season. I just think she's a very balanced hero right now so definitely uh i like that it was picked up for the b-side compliments vox compliments catherine compliments Arden. really nice composition coming out from this b-side in our last pickup interesting it's all going to come down to the engagements that the catherine Arden and our come out together but one of those three heroes are going to have to protect the vox alongside lyra and then over on this um a side you have a lot of aggression coming out from the Reza from the Glaive and the Ringo. Ringo, even though he's not very well known in the current meta, not very well played, he is a quite an aggressive bottom lane hero. Once he is given a chance, once he hits that kind of first on a power spike, his twirly, um, twirling silver can really put out a lot of DPS. He is one of the quickest DPS um, based heroes in Vainglory. And uh, he's definitely going to be a big danger when you match him with the likes of Reza in this game. We are into this setup right now, this exhibition show match in between the two games. If you are just joined us, welcome to the EU Champions Cup. My name is Imperian, casting alongside Dominate. We denominate. We did see a first series matchup between um, Sly and Bowser. Sly took that series 2 0 quite comfortably we are going to have another matchup for you guys after this viewer game because we had quite a long break ahead of us so why not get these uh players in have a little bit of fun along the way and you know ourselves can cast you know something quite casual to nominate i'm not i'm not sure how casual this is gonna be imperium we've got some pretty sweaty people up in here right now so we'll uh, I, we'll have to see how that goes. No. Uh, the nominee, the players can sweat. We'll just cast casually. You know what I mean? Oh, like, oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. But uh, we do have a little <laughs> bit of a jungle invade coming out of. Uh, we're just gonna go with Orange side here since they're not actually a team. But uh, Hunter RX on the box, 
Uh, gonna be trying to get him fed up very, very quickly. We we saw last game what a performance Crystal Box can have, especially when up against a Finn. And uh, that's what we've got. We've got a Finn, we've got a Glaive, we've got a Reza, we've got a Ringo who does have to commit himself pretty forward in a fight if he wants to get damage down. So, uh, oh. you know, four big targets that'll be susceptible to damage there. Beautiful stun coming down onto Juju from Decca, but uh, not quite enough to find the kill. In fact, uh, Lyra likely will not even probably leave the lane uh, because Lyra thinks. Uh, Requiem uh, down here on the Ringo. Excited to see Ringo in this game because we don't see a ton of Ringo anymore. He's just, uh, he's very susceptible to damage <laughs> since he lacks so much mobility that a lot of the other options of laners have. But uh, definitely, a uh, huge dueling potential coming out of Ringo, huge pick potential coming out of Ringo. Yeah, he's a, he's a kind of hero right now that, you know, like I said, isn't too much in the meta, but is very much a do or die type hero, as in you go in hard, you do as much damage as you can if you survive. Also, if you die, you take down as many heroes as you can in the meantime. And those actually work quite well with Glaive, and they go in, they're gonna get the kill on to Nighthawk. One more base attack damage! Not quite done the nominate. Yeah, and you know, that's even not too too harmful. I mean, you know, they didn't get the kill on the Nighthawk, but realistically, it's gonna take him just as much time to get back to the lane as if he would have died. We're still very early on. Uh that recall time versus death timer, pretty pretty negligible difference there. Um, it will cause him to miss out on a little bit of wave regardless, though. It's gonna be quite a few minions that are gonna crash here underneath this turret. Uh, that he's going to uh, struggle to get. Um, meanwhile, we do have a little bit of an invade coming out in the top half of the jungle here, and Nara and Arden are working their way onto the uh, Crystal Treant, but uh, anime One Piece, <laughs> oh, able to steal it away. Huge play from the Finn, huge quibble damage there. Oh, brutal. Heart, heart charms just, for, just to rub the salt into the wound there. Oh man, that's my boy Bruce working so well on this thing. He is the captain main. Now deck on your screen, putting Hunter X under a lot of pressure on this Celeste. He's going to have that slightly stronger early game on this Celeste. Um, both heroes are, are overall quite balanced in terms of early, mid, and late game, but deck up. you know, on this Celeste is going to have slightly better early game. But now Juju trying to go in, deal out that bright bulwark, but it's not quite enough to catch out. Decca on your screen, and Decca, like I said, one of the most knowledgeable players within the EU scene, but also one of the most talented. Plays a very mean Celeste, and still hasn't even hit. Power Spike gets the core claps on, looking to get those. Makes their glass hits onto Iron Juju, and making him go back under turret to nominate. Yeah, Decca's not done though. He's looking for Hunter X here. Can he pick up the kill? He is going to get that one, but uh, I think that's going to be all for him here. Uh, sitting on quite a bit of gold, he's going to go ahead and recall, uh, start getting some of those items built. Not quite enough to finish his first tier 3, but he's very, very close. Uh, interested to see which direction he goes. Uh, Nighthawk back down here in the bottom lane. Requiem and Mike are both down here ready to go. And Catherine unfortunately does struggle quite a bit for a long time in the 5v5 scene. Uh, top lane Catherine's with the Storm Crown was just like a free win basically but yeah. uh fortunately to some storm crown changes that is no longer the case actually have to be good at catherine now to uh to do and we'll see what nighthawk can bring out but uh catherine I, I do think is a a very overlooked here i think she brings a lot to the table for 5v5 i think uh you have to be good with her to do it and i think that's kind of the struggle is she's fallen out of people's comfort zones a little bit well because she's not broken so you have to know the build path it's very situational like you said you have to know how to play the catherine you have to know when to really engage with her because otherwise if you don't she's gonna really get caught out and shut down but we do see a kill over in the mid lane deck on her screen taking out hunter X. Hunter X is mainly a captain main, so it is playing an unconventional position. And we do see in the bottom lane, Requiem, along with Mikkei, going to secure the first <laughs> bottom lane turret. And the blue side have a goal lead of about 4k. Denominate, what do you think of that fantastic Glaive rainbow skin? 
moving on. <laughs> moving on. You don't like it? You don't like it? I, I'm not in love with it. I'm not in love with it. I'm gonna be honest here. I, I think I think it's very well done, but I'm always gonna stick with my prehistoric wave three. Uh, I can't even remember what they renamed it to now at this point. But um, I, I, I love Glaive. I think he's absolutely excellent at setting up plays. Um, the afterburn can just it can really bring a lot of surprise to what your team is able to do. Um, it's it can be very difficult to block if activated correctly. And it's so good at picking off one squishy target out of position. And and I it, it's really been great uh, to see Mike, uh performing well on it. When you pair it up with the Ringo, who has that strong slow out of his Achilles shot, uh, it can be a potent combo. Mike by himself, pushing Hunter, R uh, Hunter X down. Uh, he's now on the back foot running away a little bit here. Here comes Requiem. Here comes that big burst damage, hopefully, from Ringo. He's uh, greeted with a Catherine to the face. Quite a bit of damage coming down here. Can they find the last hit onto the Lyra? It is going to be an afterburn, but Glaive is going to lose his life for going a little too far. And now I think Red Team might even be able to turn this fight around. There's one. There's two. Uh, can they find another kill here? Boff, he's on to Decca. It should be an easy pick up there. Nighthawk, and uh, I can't tell who's dancing underneath him, but they might be able to pick up the kill onto Anime One Piece here as well. Uh, it does look like they will be able to, and uh, huge turnaround there by the uh, by the red side. Yeah, that goal lead has, you know, rain remained roughly the same, but they definitely stopped the blue, the blue side from really kind of um, being able to get a full-on lead. This comes down to the fact that they've kind of hit a couple of power spikes. You have buff on that Serpent's Mask. You have the Hunter X on the Vox getting you alternate current. The Crucible coming out from Iron Juju is very, very wise and clever. Now Eleven trying to get that kill onto Mikobishi. Um, Koboshi. Um, my apologies, Mikobashi. That's definitely interesting on the end. But also, one thing to point out, it is a weapon power Reza going for the Serpent's Mask for an item. Looking at Requiem, though, uh, that first item, um... Surface Mask, I don't agree with it. You know, Ringo is already out of the meta. You definitely wanted to go for core damage on the likes of the Star Blade. But I suppose the Surface Mask does give it a little bit of a sustain. But I just don't think it's needed in this situation when you're going up against it, the likes of the Inara and the Arden. You want to get as much damage as possible. However, mid lane turn has been taken out by both Decker on your screen and Anime One Piece. Miko Bashi. Coming in, nearly getting a kill onto Decca, but Decca manages us to, to survive quite effectively. It is blocked. Glaive gets a kill onto an hour. This is trade for trade nearly between these two teams, but the blue side does look just that little bit more ahead in this game. They still have that goal lead, which has actually increased to about 6k at this stage of the game. Everybody there looking pretty company in Wreckham. Going in hard, aggressive. Like I said, Ringo is a very aggressive hero when he is given a chance. He's got the breaking point second item, so you want to be as aggressive as possible in some way to break up the to um, bring up those stacks as quickly as possible while still cutting Hellfire Brew comes in. Does more damage than you would think onto I am Juju. Fo Juju forces the Lyra back quite effectively denominate like i said blue team looking pretty good in the 10 minute mark of this game yeah they absolutely are solar storm rips through gonna pick up a kill on to juju that lyra is gonna fall um no fountain yet on either side uh we do have the uh crucible prioritization as crowd control is so dependent in 5v5 ringo is gonna pick up that kill onto inara Meanwhile, the oh. Celeste is going to fall to Arden, but Reza, a quick answer back on this weapon power Reza. Serpent's Mask, Tension Bow, doing work. Who needs Fountain when you have Serpent's Masks? That's 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 it, you know. The, the, the Serpent's Mask is basically your Fountain, Kappa. But either way, Crucible was really simply the best first item coming out from the Finn Denominate because Finn's a late game hero. You definitely want to have that Crucible as a team wide protection the early stages of the game on the fin because technically and conventionally you know you're, you're gonna have a, a, a worse or slash harder um okay 
Um, okay, so this is going to be interesting. Um, it's some interesting news, but yeah, the the Finn is a uh, definitely white source coming out being picked up on, on Crucible first item, but we do Whoa. see uh, Levin being caught out. Hunter X almost dropping there to the Solar Storm. Eleven is going to use that Nether Form Detonator to get out, and nothing really going to come out of that fight there. Celeste poking a little bit, but Blue Side, they're all grouped together. Boff, he's up here on the top lane on this Arden. He's had free reign to push down this turret, and uh, he's going to get it uncontested there. It's currently 14 to 5, with about a 6,000, almost 7,000 gold lead. Actually, about a 7,000 gold lead, even. But uh, so far, Blue Side, they've been pretty dominant, but we we keep seeing these little slivers of life coming out of the red side. Uh, Box is getting to a comfortable part of his build. Boff is going to get dropped here like a rock in the uh, enemy jungle. That's going to be another kill going over. And just as the Black Claw lands, it looks like Blue, they're going to go ahead and start that one up. And uh, rightfully to do so, with the, with the lead that they have and the pick that they just got, definitely makes a lot of sense for them to go for that. Yeah, Buff just got groupied, my dear friend. Denominate, that's the worst thing you want to do in a team wide situation. That is the late game in the 12 minute mark. The Black Claw has been unleashed by this blue side. You have the itemization power spike of the Surface Mask Breaker Point coming out from the, the Ringo. You do have Tension Bow Surface Mask coming out from Rez. So that's going to be a lot of basic attack and burst damage. And then you have Poison Shift, Star Blade. A great mix of itemization. Pull comes in, the mortal wound finished the job, finish the job on to this liar, and this is still another consistent push. Coming out from this blue side, big guy being pulled under pressure by Buff. Buff is trying to chase it, gets out to Gota, but isn't going to be able to catch out. The game <laughs> turns his tension on to wreck him, but 2v1 once again, Buff gets shut down, my furry little friends. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Turret is going to drop there. Two turrets, in fact, as Blue have constantly just been pushing in. No reason they shouldn't get this armory, but Black Claw is very, very low. Oh, they didn't stay for the armory. Um, little bit of a miss there, I would I would think. Getting those empowered minions would have been easily worth even, uh, you know, maybe losing out on the Ringo um, or the Finn there. I, I definitely Ooh. think they could have taken that. But now it's going to be 11 here in the top portion of the jungle he's on the run he does turn some damage around on a nighthawk but here comes juju arcane passages down can they pick up the kill doesn't look so it looks like the troublemaker is just a little too quick to get him out of harm's way and uh 17 to 5 remains the score line as reza makes that great escape that was actually really clever coming out from 11 on the reza the reason why is because it was risky by all means but because he's got serpent's mask he, when he was able to get the basic attacks off in a comfortable position, he was actually sustaining without taking a lot of damage. And plus with the natural mobility of the Reza, it was really well executed by Eleven. It was great balance between disengagement and sustainability with that surface mask first item um, coming out for himself. But now this is blue side engaging. Buff is going to once again get groupied, shut down. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. This is the blue side. Now looking to engage once again even further. <coughs> yeah, they are definitely looking to. Decca on your screen, sitting here level 11 on the Celeste. He's got that ultimate ready to go, sitting at about half health. Oh, a huge, uh, huge supernova there is going to chunk out some damage. Unfortunately, still no take on that armory. I definitely think Blue need to start working on that. Box is getting very far along in his build. He's going to start to be a pretty big threat. Um, you know, we've got Catherine who's got the Atlas Pauldron down. It's very easy for Catherine to get onto the Ringo and onto the Glaive to slow down those attacks. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, I would say Ringo has really fallen off. It's, it's just too easy for certain characters to stick to him, uh, Catherine being one of them. Now Boff, he's in here looking for some damage on the Mike, but the huge damage coming out of Celeste answers back quickly. Hellfire Brew is out. That is true damage, but it won't be enough to bring Boff down. Eleven, he is working his way around with Mike. They're looking for that kill if they can get it. Huge spike there coming out of Eleven. That's one kill picked up. Got 15 on the board. Now got a fight breaking around the wall here, oh. entering red base. Oh, huge play as we pick up a kill onto the Lyra. Now we see blue. They've got to be working their way into this vein crystal at this point. They've got pretty decent death timers still on the board. 10 seconds before Arden's even up, and 20 seconds before Lyra is up. So 
So they've definitely got a, uh, a huge advantage here going into this. They might even get two armories uh, if they don't get the win. That would be a good place up for them. Oh, huge! Core Collapse comes through, stunning up two. That's going to be three kills knocked off very quickly. And there's no reason at this point that Blue should lose here. Bob, he's... Uh, He's running around, but uh, he ultimately knows what's going on here. Deca on your screen, raining in those Helios. Boff does die in the back line. Another kill is going to drop onto Juju there, and that's a 25 to 5 victory. 12,000 gold lead for uh, for the blue side. Yeah, I was quite convincing coming out from the blue side. They just played overall a little bit better. You saw the lack of synergy coming out from the right side. Look, it's a, it's a viewer match. These players just kind of lumped together. It's slightly to be expected. But I want to give credit to the likes of Anime um, Anime One Piece, also known as Bruce. Stuck so well to Deca on your screen. Deca on the screen on that... Um, Celeste played so well, getting 4, 2, and 12. Um, 12 assists coming out. But you had Requiem actually making that uh, Ringo work very, very effectively. But had great synergistic support from Mika. He went 9, 1, and 4 on his own side. Um, and 11 finishing it off. Going 5 and 0 on this weapon power resid denominate it was just overall domination that from this red side but great to have a little bit of fun viewer match however we hate to end things on a bit of a sad slash sour note for you guys unfortunately we have had the news that team invicta who were set to play divine vendetta have forfeited um due to not being able to get their full roster available for this matchup and they do not have they they've made the decision to not want to bring a sub in in the last minute so they have forfeited their series their game divine vendetta will move on to the next stage of the european of the eu champions cup it is sad to hear because hey look you know as much as um you know, we like to, to end things quicker than usual as casters sometimes. We want to cast some absolute hype main glory action. We want to see these top EU teams go at each other. And it's a shame when these teams do not show up. Especially when a cup has been organized for your benefit. It's a shame when uh, you guys don't show up when it's due scheduled. However, a uh, denominator that is going to... Um, kind of going to be the end of it for ourselves any kind of last words uh before uh we look to um look to uh end it and, and let let the viewers know about the next set of action that's going to be coming up for uh for the viewers nominee have you forfeited as well I forfeited it as well. Um, I was I was all hyped up, getting coffee for this next matchup, and then I'm just sitting here listening. I'm like, oh, it's 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 over, it's over. It's over. But um, we uh, we do have some uh, nice matchups for you guys tomorrow. <laughs> it will be um, Oogie Boogie versus Sly will be our startup game, and then uh, we will be moving into the second set of matches, uh, which will be DVI versus Potato Pedal, and I expect. Uh, I specifically expect tomorrow to be very interesting looking at the Oogie Boogie and the uh, the Sly lineups. Yeah, I think this is going to be Sly's biggest test before the World's Invitational. It's going to be a very strong Oogie Boogie roster. And then over on the side of Divine Vendetta, who won their series tonight by forfeit. They're going to be going up against Potato Pedal. The name of that team alone reeks of a uh, threat and danger i say with the most sarcastic tone possible um but it's going to be some some very interesting matchups for ourselves and the viewers tomorrow it is going to be yourself to nominate and maxman casting those fantastic games coming up but uh you know so like i said that's going to be it for us <laughs> tonight it is once again starting tomorrow at 1800 CET that is 6 p.m. CET Central European time tomorrow um so on that note like I said uh 
you know, look forward to seeing all you guys there supporting Vainglory Esports in EU. My name is Imperium. Thank you to the nominee as well as all the back support staff, including Maxman. See you once again on the rise.